So today we're going to mix up the format. Welcome back to Cafe Racer Garage, I am Dan and today I've got something a little bit different for you. If you enjoy building motorcycles, the chances are you enjoy riding motorcycles and if that's the case, then you're going to love riding one of these things. So the reason for this video is I love that feeling you get when you go for a ride on your motorcycle and you just feel free. You feel like you're flying. If you've ridden a motorcycle, you own a motorcycle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's really hard to explain to people that have never ridden, but I love that feeling and unfortunately, if I'm just going down the road to get some takeout or going down the road to get a couple of things from the shops and coming home again, I don't want to go through that process of putting on my helmet, my gloves, my riding jacket, my riding pants, my riding shoes. It just, it's a bit of an ordeal just to get everything on just to go down for a quick little run down the road and back again. And I know some people ride without all that gear and some people risk it. I'm just not one of those people. I don't like to ride down without all that riding gear on because just in case I did come off, then I wish I did put it on. I'll generally just drive my car and it sort of sucks because you know you've got a really cool machine there that you could ride but you just don't use it all the time and that's why this is awesome and that's why I think you're going to love it. If you had a friend of yours that had one of these and offered you a ride of it you probably wouldn't pass it up. Um, both of these are absolutely a blast to ride and I want to explain a little bit about the two and maybe do a bit of a comparison between the two. At the time of this video these two boards are pretty much the leaders in the industry. One's made in China and the other one is made in the US. This is the X-Way Flex Riot, does about 40 kilometers an hour, and this guy here is the One Wheel XR, and it does about 30 kilometers an hour. I well, don't recommend riding either of these two without a helmet. I'd always tell you to wear a helmet when you're riding these things. If you're getting up to those top speeds and you do come off, you'd want to wish you were wearing at least a helmet. Uh, the other thing is, both hands are free when you're riding this one, um, but obviously you've got one hand free because you've got a remote for this guy here. I'll give you a bit of a rundown on some of the specs between the two. So I've already mentioned the speed, but what distance do they go? So from one charge of the battery, this guy here will give you 32 kilometers and this guy here will give you 29 kilometers. So it's a fair distance. And they both have regenerative braking, which means that whilst you're braking, it'll actually generate more power to put back into the batteries, which is pretty damn cool. So if you've got a lot of hills in your area, uh, these things quite easily will take you up a hill. I'm um, around about 95 to 100 kgs, and I've had no problems going up any of the hills with these guys here. So speaking about speed, this guy here has four gears, and the first two gears are accessible to you for the first 10 kilometers, and then after you've done 10 k's, it'll let you access the other two, which is a really cool safety feature, because if you're not used to a skateboard with motors on it, yeah, you want to make sure that you, you ease your way into it. Um, it's really cool. I love that. I think that's really smart of them to do that. Uh, let's talk about skill level. Uh, if you've ridden a skateboard, you know what a skateboard's like to use. So the skill on a skateboard is, you know, I guess fairly easy. This guy here is different. Let's just say that. Um, when you first get on it and you first step onto the thing, it's more of a mind thing. It's more like you're on one wheel and you know you're on one wheel. Uh, once you get comfortable with the fact that you're on one wheel, it kind of just goes where you want it to go. It's really hard to explain, but the closest thing that they reckon it's to is snowboarding, and I can highly vouch for that. It's very, very much like snowboarding. Uh, and yeah, if you love snowboarding, that thing is just awesome. You're gonna love it. Fun factor between the two of them, I think the one wheel wins that round because it's just, it's just different. It's very, very similar to snowboarding, but it, it's just fun. It's just so fun. This guy here, don't get me wrong, it is also equally fun, but I think the one wheel still wins that round. Uh, if you're worried about death wobbles and things like that, just know that you have brakes in this guy. So if you're going to go fast down a hill, then you can slow down. And if you want to, you know, pretty much ride around and go up hills and not have to worry about, you know, pushing, then this guy is awesome. So the weight of the two boards, this one's 7.7 .7 kilograms and this one's about 13 kilograms. There's a quite a bit of difference between the two. This guy here, you could actually ride as a normal skateboard. It has a tiny bit of friction because it's belt driven, but you could still ride it. It'd still be okay. It's just obviously going to be a little bit slower than a normal skateboard because you have that friction. This guy here, if it ran out of battery, you would have to pick it up and carry it. It needs the battery to balance it out. So you couldn't just push it or ride it because it just needs that. So that being said, 13 kilograms doesn't sound like much, but if you had to carry it a fair distance, it would probably get a little bit heavy. 
Having said that, they both have an app that you can actually put on your phone and can control everything. This thing has gears that you can control the acceleration and the braking of each gear. It has a lot of control inside that app. This guy also has an app that you can control a lot on and it will also send you alerts when you get down to 50% so that you shouldn't really run out of battery anyway. And when you get down to 50%, you know you've got to turn around and go back. Otherwise, you will be carrying the thing. <laughs> All that being said, let's take these guys out for a ride and have a bit of fun. So I was just about to leave. I've got everything ready. The batteries are charged. I was about to walk out the door and then it just starts to rain. So unfortunately, I can't quite go out at the moment. Hopefully it clears up. But while we're waiting for that, let's try and figure out if there's a way to mount one of these things to a motorcycle. So let's change out these clothes for something a little bit more appropriate to do some grinding and welding. And let's get into it. I designed this so that it was really fast and easy to install and as you can see down here I actually notched out the bottom mount. That mount is the original bolt for the muffler uh, and all you have to do is put that in place and then push that onto the top shock mount, put your nut back on and you are good to go. That's it. So fast and simple. Uh, the only thing left to do now is obviously get this powder coated or painted and then line the inside so that I don't scratch the board with this stuff here. This is just a self-adhesive uh, furniture protection felt, I think it is. Uh, it'll be perfect, so I'll just line the inside of that. Before I do that, I want to put the board in place so that I can actually come up with some sort of latch system so that the board doesn't bounce around at all.
So those brackets are now complete. Uh, I spent a little bit of time in the design side of things, as you could see with the cardboard, to make sure that the boards were gonna be really locked in place, so they're not gonna slide around and move when you're riding the motorcycle. So that's now done. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. So what I'm gonna do, it's been a little while. They took a bit longer than I first anticipated, which means the rain has cleared. So that means that now I can go and get my friend Bart, give him a board, I can leave the other board on the motorcycle, and then we can go out and have a bit of fun. So let's hit it. So a couple of really good reasons why I'd actually want to mount one of these things to a motorcycle. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory, but I'll give you a couple of my examples. Is first up, if you live a distance away from a park or I guess a city or even the beach, and once you get to uh, your destination on your bike, you can park up your bike, grab your skateboard, pull it off and or one wheel, and then off you go on your destination and you can cover a hell of a lot of ground in such a short time. Um, and you know exploring a city like that is just fantastic I can't say that for every country I don't know the rules but I do know here in Australia I'm pretty sure you can just use these things wherever there's a footpath you know within reason comes to the different brands of boards you only really have one option for the one wheel uh, they're pretty much the only ones out there I think there's been maybe a couple of copycats who have tried and just failed and just haven't quite got it um, so they're the only one of their kind they do have two different models um, but there's only one of them when it comes to the e-skates like the electric skateboards there's heaps of different brands out there uh, X-Way themselves pride themselves on having uh, really really high quality trying to be better than the competition without going crazy with their uh, price tag so they're actually renowned for that very 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 good quality boards if you're in Australia and you're looking at getting a skateboard or a one wheel uh, the best place to get one is Ben Buckler boards that's where mine too came from and their customer service is on point um, they're really good at what they do obviously they've been around for a while uh, they even have a YouTube channel actually so I'll link that down below uh, if you want to go and check that out so for anybody who's outside of Australia and wants to get an X-Way board, I have a discount code for you. Unfortunately, I don't have one for the one wheel, but for the X-Way board, it's CAFE20. 
A couple of things to note. First up, uh, they're not really kids' toys. They're more of a transport than they are a kids' toy. They go a little bit too fast, I think, to be a toy. And the second thing is just be very careful because they are damn addictive. And I've been using mine every single day since I've got them. But seriously, try and wipe the smile off your face. If you get one, you'll know what I mean. So at the time of this video is still around the time when COVID-19 is still happening and quite active. And it's not like we can actually uh, travel at the moment and go overseas. So if you can't do that, I highly recommend getting one of these things. You're gonna have so much fun. me mixing the format up today with something a little bit different than building motorcycles obviously a lot of you guys love riding motorcycles and these things are just an absolute blast to ride so if you had a choice to get one of these which one would you get let me know uh, would it be the e-skate or would it be the one wheel leave me a comment and let me know and having said that if you are in australia and you do decide to get yourself one of these boards make sure you go and check out ben buckler boards as well as his youtube channel that's my recommendation on where to get one and if you do decide to get yourself the x-way flex there is also a discount code there for you as well so have an amazing day and I'll chat with you in the next video. So a couple of different options you have between the two boards. Firstly, the one wheel. You have uh, a mud guard that you can get which will stop the water and stuff if you go through a puddle from splashing up on your feet. Uh, it's kind of cool to have. Some people just like that bare look of the, the tire, obviously, so they don't worry about it. And if you don't go through any puddles, you're pretty good. You might just get a few rocks that hit your feet and that's about it, really. A few other things you can get for the one wheel is a, a handle for the side so you can carry the thing like a briefcase, I guess. The one wheel has two models. It has the Pint, which is the smaller version than the one I've got, and the one I have is the XR. Uh, and there's difference between the two is pretty much I just mainly range uh, how far you can actually take them, I guess. So the one wheel also has built-in lights, the LED lights, so uh, you can actually ride this thing at night time, which is kind of cool. So both boards also have a fast charger you can buy as an extra if you wanted to drop your charging time in half. So the X-Way board also has a couple of options for you. Uh, you can get different wheels for it, which will give you a better top end, like larger wheels, which are a lot softer as well. So a nicer ride, better top end, but you will lose a little bit of braking. Um, and I guess a little bit of, I guess, bottom end, like takeoff, it'll lose a little bit of speed at the bottom end, but like gain it at the top because they are obviously a bigger wheel. So the X-Way Flex doesn't actually come with lights like the uh, one wheel. However, you can get them if you do decide to ride at night. And I do recommend it if you do, but I wouldn't just rely on them. I would actually use a torch or a headlamp or something as well, just so you can actually see physically where you're going. And if you are driving on the street, at least you can get someone's attention by shining the torch you know, around.